getting ready to call the action in tonight's season opening basketball game featuring the Rockets of the University of Toledo and the IPFW Mastodons. Charlie Washington uh, Memorial Coliseum is the new home for IPFW basketball, a tremendous facility. Tremendous facility, a tremendous program. I think it's a great leap, great effort to go this route. Uh, very exciting day, Dick Vitale, a week away uh, from the Globetrotters. Uh, Big season, and I hope for wonderful things to happen for the Dons. But this is a wonderful start, and I think they're taking uh, precisely the right steps. Now, you mentioned it is homecoming. It's homecoming game number three for the Mastodons. Two years ago, they lost to Moorhead State. Last year, they lost to Butler. So we hope the third time is the charm as they get ready to take on a Toledo Rocket team that comes into this ball game fresh off a 14 and 15 season a year ago, only the second losing season in their last seven. Starting lineups for Toledo at center. Alan Pinson, a 6'10 freshman from Hebron, Ohio. At one guard, a freshman, Justin Ingram, 6'2 freshman out of Lansing, Michigan. Another guard, Sammy VJ Gus, a new I'd screw it up, 6'6 sophomore. Keith Tripwood, a senior, 6'3 senior out of Toledo, Toledo, Ohio, rather. There's another guard. And the other starter for Toledo, Kareem Milsom, 6'7 junior out of Toronto, Ontario. The head coach, Dan Joplin, beginning his eighth season. He has a record of 119 and 88. Now for the Mastodons, one forward, Rick Wine, 6'7", a junior out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Another forward, Quinton Carruthers, 6'3", sophomore from Flint, Michigan. At one guard, freshman, Bo Bauer, 6'3", freshman out of Walton, Indiana, Lewis Cass High School. At center, Jim Kesnick, 6'10", senior out of Pewaukee, Wisconsin. And also up front, David Simon, a 6'10 junior out of Vernon Hills, Illinois. The head coach, Doug Knoll, in his fifth season. He has a record of 35 and 82 here at IPFW. Has a good look at Joe Pachota, the associate head coach for the Mastodons. Teams are warming up here. We've got uh, approximately just under two minutes before I believe the playing of the national anthem. Nice crowd filing in here to the Coliseum. Charlie, you alluded to the fact that uh, earlier not only here at the Coliseum, but over at the Gates Sports Center. Dick Vitale, in his 25th year as an analyst for ESPN and ABC Sports, was here, talked to both crowds, and uh, just fired everybody up. Well, anytime you can bring a personality uh, to a situation like a Dick Vitale, you know you're headed in the right direction. And the things that the Dons are doing, I mean, Dick Vitale is uh, tremendous. You either love Dick Vitale and some people turn and say they turn the TV down. But I tell you what, the guy is full of energy, enthusiasm, and he has some wonderful things to say. And he's had some great things to our young kids. Well, he sure did. And I uh, told him, had a chance to interview him uh, myself earlier today, and I, had a, I told him that uh, I finished reading his new book, Living the Dream, about 1.30 this morning. It's 308 pages long, but there's a lot of good material in there. Well, one thing he mentioned out here on the floor, the world is just full of ordinary people that make the extra effort to be extraordinary. And you're uh, hearing the Stomp Band in its second year of existence at IPFW playing the IPFW fight song, which I didn't know there was one, Charlie, to tell you the truth. Well, we were baptized with it uh, last year, one of our telecasts last year, I remember. So, wow, that's a neat new twist. And once again, this IPFW athletic program, as well as the university as a whole, doing some wonderful things and headed in a tremendous direction. Now, as we said, Toledo had a subpar year for them last year. They were 14 and 15. They are a member of the Mid-American Conference. IPFW finished the year off their first year as an official Division I member with a mark of 9 and 21 but they did win seven of their last 13 games, so they want to build on that as well. Yes, and it's going to be very important to have a good showing against a MAC team. So we are about ready to have our national anthem played here momentarily.
tremendous rendition of our national anthem sung a cappella here at the Coliseum. Well, Charlie, I started to say Toledo played IPFW two years ago up in Toledo at Savage Hall. And that was a ball game that I had a chance to be at. And the Mastodons had the lead at halftime, had the lead most of the second half, but the Rockets came on strong in about the last six, seven minutes and won that ball game 69 to 60. So perhaps a little bit of revenge on the part of the Mastodons tonight. Certainly, but lots of changes for both teams. Uh, teams look a lot different. And the big thing to look at, you have a two freshman point guards actually. And one thing that Dons have counted on the last three or four years it's been a steady play at point guard of uh, particularly D'Angelo Woodall. And we're, I think we're going to miss that about the same time. We're looking for some big things out of this freshman from Lewis Cass. That's true. Bo Bauer, and as we said at the top of the broadcast, this is the first time a freshman has started at point guard for a Doug Knoll coach team. And I know we talked prior to the two exhibition games, and uh, I won't say Doug was concerned, but it was just unusual for him to start a freshman at the point guard because that's a very important position. That position takes a tremendous amount of poise, being able to see the whole floor, being able to hit the open shot if needed, being able to find people, getting everybody into the basketball game, and certainly keeping your composure. So certainly it's, it's the key to any basketball team. IPFW played two exhibition games a week ago yesterday, Thursday. They took on the Harlem Globetrotters, who played for keeps, and the Globetrotters won that ball game. Uh, I believe it was 89 to 57. And then uh, Monday night, just a few nights ago, they took on Marathon Oil, a team of uh, graduated collegians, played extremely well, and won that contest 101 to 71, having four players in double figures. Right. Well, I'll tell you what, losing to the Globetrotters is certainly no disgrace. And a lot of people may have been, you know, disgruntled. We didn't see the old funny Globetrotters. This is a serious basketball team with some hardcore rugged players, and they beat a lot of people, including national champion uh, Syracuse, Michigan State also. Toledo played two exhibition games uh, against a, an uh, all-star team and against a Division II opponent and they averaged 98 points a contest. That's high octane. <laughs> well, the Rockets are on the court. They are in their traveling blue uniforms with white and gold trim. The Macedons now come onto the court in their home whites with dark blue trim. It'll be David Simon going up against Alan Pinson. Pinson, a redshirt freshman in the circle. Downs will be going from left to right on your television screen. Tap up and controlled by IPFW. And here's the point guard, freshman Bo Bauer with the basketball. Downs working it on the perimeter. David Simon kicks it back out. Wyan for three. No good. Rebounded by Pinson, and here come the Rockets on the attack for the first time tonight. Three-pointer missed. Kesnick with the rebound. And B. Jenkins missed the three-point shot there. Here comes Quentin Crothers. Nice dish to Simon for the jam. The Dons are on top, two to nothing. And that's a great pass and a great start for Simon. That's what you need to keep Simon in the basketball game and get him going early with some easy buckets and keeping him out of foul trouble is going to be a tremendous key for the Dons. Triplet gets the ball inside to Pinson. To get it back out. Triplet. Baseline move to Jacobs, and he throws it away. First turnover, turnover of the night for the Rockets side of the IPFW basketball. Good perimeter defense as well as interior defense on that particular possession. 2-0, Mastodons on top, just underway here at the Memorial Coliseum. Homecoming night, 2003. Simon in the post. Has it knocked away. Loose ball. And on the possession, it will belong to the Toledo Rockets. That time Simon got caught up, waiting a little bit too long to do something with the basketball. Either get that ball out of there or make a quick move. Milson inbounds the ball to Justin Ingram, who is a 6'3 freshman. 
two freshman point guards tonight. Interesting. Pinson for three, yes. Now when Pinson puts Toledo on top, three to two. When you're a big guy that can step out and nail that shot, that could spell trouble. Carruthers in the lane. Has it knocked away? We've got a whistle. First foul of the night called. It'll be on Ingram. His first, team first. It'll be inbounded by Bo Bauer. Rick Wyant, watched by Triplett. Toledo in a man-to-man -man defense. Simon underneath. And before he can get the shot off, we've got a foul called on Toledo. Kareem Milson picks up his first, team second. Wyant inbounds it and throws it away. Second turnover on the Mastodons. So Toledo will inbound it. They lead IPFW three to two. We've played just about two minutes. Here comes Ingram, 6 three freshman out of Lansing, Michigan. Watch by Bauer. The Dons are in a man-to-man -man defense. Ball knocked away. Nice play by Bauer. To Wyatt leaping at Carruthers, lays it off the glass and in. Great leave that time by Wyan. 4-3, Dunn's on top. Not for long as Triplett comes right back with another tray. His first points of the night, Toledo on top, 6-4. Wyatt from the outside off the iron, no good. Carruthers with the offensive board, put back and in. That's a tremendous athletic move. First to tip the ball up, to recapture it, and then wonderful left hand lay in. Very athletic. We're tied at six. Ingram inside. Pinson fires it up and in over the outstretched arms of David Simon. Pinson now with five points. Ball knocked away, turnover. Here come the Rockets on the run. Triplet for three. Toledo with their third tray here in the early going. I think he had a toenail on the line. I think they gave him only a two on that particular play. We'll take every break we can. And it's no secret <laughs> that I don't think the shot clock's in any danger when the Rockets have the ball. 10-6 our score. Toledo on top. Downs with the basketball. Simon, watched by Milson. Wants to drive on Milson. Double team. Turn around jumper. Yes. Good move that time. Still would like to see him make a little quicker move, either get it out of there quicker or make his move quicker. Whistle and a foul on the play. Foul on Bo Bauer, his first, team first. Substitutions for Toledo. A.J. Schellebarger, a 6'9 senior. And Chauncey Shouten, a 6'3 sophomore. They enter the lineup. Rockets trying to inbound it. Triplet. Has it knocked away by Carruthers. Good effort by Quentin Carruthers. That's a young man's come to play tonight, Mike. Tremendous effort. They're going to adjust the shot clock. 31 seconds on the shot clock. 16.09 on the first half game clock. Toledo trying to inbound it. Ingram in the leg, kicks it out. Three-pointer on the way, short. But we've got a whistle underneath, and I think Crothers is going to be called for an over-the-back foul. Gave up a little position that time. You have to find your man. Just can't watch that ball and then go for it. You have to find someone to box out. At this level, everybody can go get it. If you don't box out, the best leaper is going to get it. Ingram up top near midcourt, watched by Bo Bauer. Triplet inside, stops, pops, and hits. Triplet now with seven points. And it's a 12 to eight Toledo lead. 
Wyatt on the left wing. Gets it inside to Simon. Back out. Bauer for three. Partially touched by Toledo. Rockets on the run. Triplet for three. No good. Carruthers with the rebound. Went up and got it. Back comes IPFW. Wyan. Cross court pass to Jim Kesnick. Wyatt up top, lob pass down low to Simon. Spin move, kicks it back out to Bauer. Well, two man game. Kesnick off the glass, no, gets a rebound, puts it up and in. That possession, Mike, set up by the quickness that time of Simon getting the ball right back out, in and out very quickly. Ingram up top with the basketball. The triplet on the wing. Triplet underneath pass. Shelton off the glass and in. Chauncey Shelton in the book for his first points of the night. And it's a 14-10 rocket advantage. Coming up on 14-20 left here in the first half. Brothers on the perimeter, takes it inside, stops, pops a 10-footer, yes. Brothers with a half a dozen. That's a good creation by that. You need players at this level who can create their own shot, and that time Carruthers certainly did. Ingram up top. Slow it down just slightly. Ball knocked away by Bauer, out of bounds. It'll be Toledo ball when we come back. Media timeout on the floor. 13.53 to go, our score, Toledo 14, IPFW 12. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Welcome back to the Memorial Coliseum, everybody. Mike Moss, Charlie Washington with you. Charlie, we played a little over six minutes. It's been back and forth, up and down, fast-paced action. Toledo on top by a deuce, 14 to 12. Well, right now, the pace is a pace that IPFW is comfortable with. They're doing a great job getting Simon involved. I love when he gets the ball and very quickly makes a decision, either to make the move or to get it right out. Quick look at some of the stats. Toledo, 6 of 9 from the floor for 67%. IPFW, 6 of 10 for 60%. Toledo, 2 of 5 from three-point range for 40%. The Dons, 0 of 3 so far. Neither team having a chance at the foul line. So both teams shooting well. I love the way Quentin Carruthers has come out tonight, Mike. Very athletic at this level. Once again, it's about athleticism, size and athleticism, and that's what the Dons are going to have to do at this level to stay competitive. And right now, he's made a great showing. It'll be Toledo basketball. Chauncey Shelton inbounding it to Rache Russell, who's in the lineup for the first time tonight. Russell also a freshman. Rockets with two freshman point guards. Schellabarger from about 10 feet off the iron, no. Toledo with the offensive rebound, however. They reload. Triplet, eight footer, short. Rebound fought for, controlled by Kesnick of the Dons. Quickly up the floor. Terry Cowan's in the lineup for the Dons. Skip pass. Kesnick for three, yes. Great. That's his game, the spot-up three-point shot. That's his game. He's 6, 10, or 11, but he's not going to bang and bruise down low if he can get him that shot. Looking good for the Dons. IPFW retakes the lead, 15 to 14. You have the feeling this is going to be a track meet before it's over. Inside pass. Shot up and in by Florentino Valencia. Freshman in the lineup for the first time tonight. Bonds, the Simon taps the missed shot back out front. Hawkins, the freshman from Garrett High School, misses the shot. The line of contact. Toledo. 
triplet. An all max election a year ago, we got a whistle. Foul gonna be called on Terry Cowens of IPFW. His first, team first. Substitution for IPFW, Byron Maloney, freshman of Indianapolis North Central High School. And for the Rockets, Antoine Curry, a 6'8 sophomore. Here's a good look at Doug Knoll in his fifth year at IPFW. Rockets with the basketball. Turn around jumper, no good. Fight for the rebound. Schellenberger touched it last, and it belonged to IPFW. A little bit of banging underneath, Charlie. Well, I think um, I think Toledo got away with the over the back foul that time. But as long as you don't get a foul on Simon, we played almost four minutes here. Excuse me, <laughs> almost four minutes, almost eight minutes, and no fouls on Simon. Great for the Don. Malone on the wing to Collins. Collins kicks it back out. Kesnick, the three off the rim, no good. Collins with the offensive rebound. Dons, another possession. Malone for three, in and out, no. Whistle going to be an over the back foul, I believe, on Jim Kesnick. I don't know about that call right there. I didn't see much contact. The crowd at the Coliseum doesn't like it. Kesnick's first. Team fourth, and we've got another official timeout with 11.48 left. We'll take a break, come back in a moment with more IPFW basketball. You're watching it on College 56 Sports. Um, hi, I was wondering if maybe, if you wanted to go out maybe or something, if you had time. I can tell by your excitable behavior and verbal faux pas that you have generalized anxiety with paranoid tendencies. It would never work. Okay, thanks. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Back at the Coliseum, Mike Moss, Charlie Washington. Glad you're joining us tonight for the season opener for IPFW. Right now, 11 minutes and 48 seconds left on the first half scoreboard. The Dons find themselves trailing by one, 16 to 15. And one thing that we've noticed, Charlie, Toledo not afraid to run the floor, not afraid to put up a quick shot. No, it seems to be that's the style of play that they want to uh, play, get up and down the court, and they've been very not shy at all about taking three-point shots. And the triplet very looked very good, taking the taking it to the basket, shooting a three-point shot. Very athletic team. So, but the Don's right there. That's a good sign. Leading scorer for Toledo triplet with seven points. Pinson with five. IPFW led by sophomore Quinton Brothers with a half a dozen. Rockets with a basketball. Russell watched by Malone, pair of freshmen. Inside pass, shot up, no good. Loose ball fought for. Valencia missed the shot and commits the over the back foul. His first, team third. So IPFW with another chance to retake the lead. Trail by one. Hawkins. Shot clock problems in the exhibition games, and we seem to have some more problems tonight. 11.09 on the game clock, and I'm not sure exactly how much on the, okay, 13 seconds, 13 seconds on the shot clock. So, Hawkins, a wind bounded for the Dons. 
Byron Malone. Kesnick on the wing. Four on the shot clock. Malone forces one up off the rim. No, rebounded by Shelton to Toledo. And here come the Rockets on the run. Russell on knocked out of bounds. Good hands by Rick Wyan. Not the greatest of uh, shot clock uh, execution there. And, but sometimes you're gonna expect that when you have a freshman point guard, sometimes you may not be aware and people may not get where they need to be when you just have a short time on a shot clock. But I'm sure the downs will get better with time. Cole Bauer, David Simon back in the lineup for IPFW. So we got Bauer, Collins, Hawkins, Wyant, and Simon on the floor. Shouting to inbound it. Whistle, traveling call on Antoine Curry. So turnover gives the ball back over to IPFW with 10.46 remaining in the half. That's a basic uh, footwork move there. Once you get it, you teach that as a, as a youngster. You learned that as a youngster. That time got his feet tangled up, caught the ball, took a little skip step before he got the jumper off. Three turnovers now for Toledo. Wyatt from the corner, no good. Shouting with the rebound. Rockets on the run. Oh, another traveling call. Shelton dragged the pivot foot. Back-to-back -back turnovers. And that's, Shelton seems to be, and I, you know, I don't know, it's two times in a row, seems to be a great athlete, great athleticism, but fundamentals, fundamental footwork seems to be lacking there. And that's not a knock against Shelton. That's a knock against uh, American basketball as a whole. We're not teaching fundamentals, and we're learning to run and jump and cross over instead of the fundamentals. Three substitutions for Toledo. Ball knocked out of bounds by Triplett. Triplett, Ingram, and Chillabarger back in the lineup for the Rockets. Rick Wine right in front of our location to inbound it. For the freshman, Bo Bauer. Played at Lewis Pass High School. There's an all-state selection. Collins. Watched closely by Triplett. Collins, pull-up jumper, off the mark, rebounded by Ingram, here come the Rockets. That's cooling off considerably now from the field. Well, I think the quickness and the athleticism is bothering the Downs, particularly Terry Collins, uh, the length and the quickness together. Nice feed inside to Schellebarger, puts it up off the glass and in and draws the foul to boot. Foul is gonna be on Justin Hawkins. His first, team fifth. At the line, A.J. Schellebarger, 6'9", senior. Gonna try to convert a conventional three-point play. First free throw attempt of the night for either team, and it's good. IPFW defense got caught in the middle that time. I say you foul him hard, don't let him get the ball up on the, on the rim. Collins off the mark at a three. Crothers back in with the offensive board. He puts up an air ball. Loose ball now pulled down by Ricardo Thomas. 6'7", senior in the lineup for the first time tonight. Dishes off to Schellebarger for the easy two. Rockets up by six. 9.20 to go here in the half. Very important possession right now. Important for the Dons to get a good shot. Got a now traveling a call. Called on IPFW. Jim Kesnick returns to the Don lineup. And we've got a 30 second timeout called by Doug Knoll. We'll take a break as well. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. Program note, join jo uh, Coach Doug Noll on College 56 Thursday evening, uh, December 4th at 7 o'clock for the premiere of the Doug Noll Show. 
He'll be joined by yours truly, the review highlights and perspective from Coach Noah and his guest. That's the Doug No Show, Thursdays at 7, Fridays at 6.30, and Saturdays at noon here on College Cable Channel 56. Back to the action, Toledo with a basketball. Triplet in the lane, dishes off underneath. Schellebarger gets it back, shot missed, no good. Loose ball, fought for underneath. Still fought for and controlled by the Rockets. Triplet travels with a basketball. Fifth Toledo turnover. And in all reality, Charlie couldn't have come at a better time for IPFW, but Toledo was really scrapping. Once again, the Dons are scrapping, and but Toledo seems to have that extra step, that a little quicker step. They're getting to the loose balls a uh, little more efficiently than the Dons. Terry Cowens on the left side. Brothers from Simon shot in the air, in and out, no good. Thomas with the rebound, three blue shirts, no white shirts on that possession. Waiting for that rebound. Ingram, eight footer off the glass and in. Justin Ingram, the freshman point guard with his first points of the night. Rocket lead up to eight, 23 to 15, with 8.12 to go, year and a half. Don't want to see this balloon to double figures, so we need, need a good scoring possession right here. Brothers up top, washed by Ingram. Kesnick on the wing, looking for Simon in the block. Back and forth. Simon, watched by Shadow Parker. Ball knocked away, picked up by Triplett. Rockets all the way to the hole. Shot up and in by Vijegas. Draws the foul, and he'll have a shot at a three point play. Terry Collins certainly got caught that time, trying to get out of the way, wanted to set up for the charge, saw he wasn't going to get it and tried to get out of the way, but there was contact made and the basket as well. Second foul on Terry Collins. He goes to the bench, replaced by Rick Wyan. Meanwhile, Sammy Vijegas, 6'6", sophomore, trying to complete a three-point play, and he does. And that brings us to another immediate timeout. 7.48 to go and a half. Toledo is up 26 to 15. Again, we want to uh, remind you to join Coach Doug Noll on College 56 Thursday evening, December 4th at 7 p.m. for the premiere of the Doug Noll Show. We'll be joined by your truly Mike Moss, and we'll review highlights and perspective from Coach Noll and his guests. That's Thursdays at 7 p.m., Fridays at 6.30, and Saturdays at noon. The Doug Noll Show beginning Thursday, December 4th, right here on College Cable Access Channel 56. And uh, I know Doug and I are both excited about this opportunity. And, uh, we're looking forward to having some fun. Right now, fun is not a word that you can put in the IPFW vocabulary. Yes, this game is in danger of getting out of hand right now. We've been seeing the last three or four possessions, very important possession. Now you cross the double figure uh, standpoint. Simon, I think, can be very effective, but he's getting the ball and he's holding it. He needs to get it, make a quick move, or get it out, in and out quickly. He's holding it a little bit too long, and then those reaching hands, roving hands, are getting in, knocking it away, and that's what happened the last two or three possessions. We mentioned IPFW. The shooting has cooled off considerably. They are now 7 of 22, that's just 32%. 1 of 10 from three-point range. Meanwhile, the Rockets, 11 of 19 for 58%. 2 of 5 from long range for 40%. Dons with the basketball. One from left to right on your television screen. Wyatt tries to lob it to Simon, throws it away, but the Rockets return the favor. Simon in the block, and he's... Followed by Schellerberger. First foul foul on Schellerberger, fourth team foul. You got the benefit of the call on that play, but once again, a little bit too much dribbling. Once you get it down there, it has to be a quick move, quick, strong move. Kyle Thrasher, 6'8 sophomore, making his first appearance of the night for IPFW. Wyatt gets the inbound pass. Asher in the low post. He has it knocked away, but we've got another foul called on Toledo. Schellebarger picks up his second foul. Team fifth. That will bring Valencia in off the bench to replace Schellebarger. 
Another example there, Thrasher, a little bit too much dribbling on the post. Get it in, make your move, or get it out. Brothers watched by Ingram. Dribbles right, throws right, has it. A reach in foul. Third successful foul called on Toledo. This one on Hugegas. Sammy's first, team sixth, one more, and the Dons will be in the one and one bonus. And here's a chance now for the Dons to get back into it, Charlie. And certainly go to the basket there. You know, we're going to be on the free throw line no matter what, whether we're shooting or not, if we get fouled. Bauer fakes the three, travels as he takes it inside the lane instead. Turnover number six for IPFW. Substitution for the Dons, Tyler Clevenger. Sophomore out of Winchester, Indiana, 6'3", making his first appearance of the night. And that's an unforced error. Those will kill you in any sport, any level. Unforced error. Triplet trying to rub off a Pinson pick. 10-foot fadeaway jumper off the rim, no good. Clevenger with the rebound. Here come the Dons, down by 11. Thrasher fakes the three, kicks it back out to Carruthers up top. Carruthers to the hole, up and in. Caught the bucket. Offensive, well, I won't say offensive foul, after the release foul on Carruthers. Well, what a nice move to the bucket. I don't like that call. I like the basket being good, but I don't like it. I think it either has to be no basket and a charge or a basket and a foul with the opportunity for a three-point play. But I tell you what, all in all, tremendous athletic move. Carruthers has been very impressive athletically. That first step, two steps from the top of the key to the hole at the line. Florentino Valencia, 6'6", freshman, one and bonus. Shot up and in. One, Terry Cowan's back in the lineup for IPFW. Replacing Quinton Carruthers, who has those two personal fouls. Well, Doug Noll does not like to have a player pick up his third foul in the first half if they can avoid it. Cowan's has got to be careful because he's got two. 6.41 left until halftime. 27-17 our score. Rockets on top. Trying to add the bonus free throw. Shot is good. Four points now for Florentino Valencia. And that turns into basically a trading of baskets where you could have had a large momentum swing with that wonderful athletic basket and a foul. Thrasher on the wing, trying to get to Simon. Double team back to Thrasher. 12 footer off the rim. No. Whistle, they're going to call Wyatt for over the back. First foul on Rick tonight. But there was a pretty good shot created because Simon got the ball. He got it and got it out quickly. So good shot. That was a good shot. We just didn't make it. Eighth team foul on the Mastodons. Heading to the strike. Keith Triplett. Last year, Triplett averaged nearly 17 points, six rebounds, and two and a half assists per ball game. Missed the free throw. Rebounded by Thrasher. Here come the Dons. Collins cut off at the pass. Dons bring it back out. Wyatt looking for Simon. Forces a shot up off the glass, no good. Pinson with the rebound. Toledo controlling the boards right now. That's their 14th, IPFW has 12. Ingram slowing things down with under six minutes to go. Jagas stops, pops, misses a 10-footer, but the Rockets get the offensive rebound. Shot up and missed by Valencia. FW coming down with the rebound. Cowan stops, pops a three-pointer. Short, Simon with the offensive rebound. Up in, count it, and he's fouled. Big, strong rebound by Simon that time. If he's not scoring in the offense, that's a great way to uh, help the team get on the offensive boards and get some stick backs. And that time you got a foul as well. The foul, I believe, was on Pence in his first. Team seventh, so IPFW will be in the bonus this final five minutes and 29 seconds. 
David Simon at the stripe, not one of his strongest suits. And as we say it, he missed the free throw, tripped it with the rebound. Rockets on the move. The last three or four possessions, the Rockets have tried to let the downs back in, and we didn't take advantage of it. Then they can come down and knock down a three-point shot. Vijegas now has six points. Lead back up to a dozen, 31-19. Jennings in the lineup for the Dons. Cowan's three-pointer on the way, short. Rebound fought for, loose ball picked up by Ingram. Rockets on the run, four on three. Skip pass, Vijegas. Cross court, Ingram for three, no good. Thrasher with the rebound for IPFW. Ball nearly stolen by Triplett. Dons need a good possession here. Collins fake the three. Around the horn, looking for Simon in the post. Clevenger for three, no. Rebound, Jennings fight for it. Simon fights for it. Loose ball picked up by Toledo. Two on one, triplet. And they're gonna call Clevenger for the block for the shot. First foul on Tyler Clevenger, ninth foul on the team. Triplet will shoot one and bonus. And right now, Mike, the athleticism of the Rockets is giving the Dons uh, trouble. Uh, they're leapers, they're slashers, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, up to the 6'6 six, six level, and they're going to the basket, and they're jumping and getting rebounds, and they're all over the place. And right now, giving the Dons some trouble. Keith Triplett, one of three seniors on this Toledo squad. Misses the first attempt. Kestnick with the rebound. Triplett over two at the strike. Chance for the Dons to cut into this 12-point deficit near the four-minute mark. Russo, we've got a holding foul on Valencia. That is his second team eight. So IPFW will be at the strike. Shelton comes back in the Toledo lineup as does Bo Bauer for IPFW. But if you don't take advantage of these free throws, Mike, if you miss the front end of a one and one, that's like a turnover. Ricardo Thomas also back in the rocket lineup. David Simon, who just missed a free throw a couple of moments ago, back for another crack at it. Freebie, that one good. A much needed free throw by IPFW. He's gonna try for his eighth point of the night. And he gets it with a little help. Friendly rims. Simon with eight, the lead down to 10. Back come the Rockets. Shelton, watched by Collins. Back up to Ingram. Watched by Bauer. Thomas. Toledo working on the perimeter. Vijegas bounces off underneath. Shot blocked by Simon, recovered by Collins. Pinson had it handed right to him. Terry Collins. Fakes the three in the lane, stops. Dishes off underneath. Simon, loose ball, and we've got a scrum on the floor and on the offense, on the alternate position, rather. It will belong to IPFW when play is resumed. 328 left in the half, score. Rockets 31, Mastodons 21. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. Where can you see world-famous writers, performers, musicians, and other artists up close and personal? Right here at IPFW. On the next edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll tell you about three very special series that take place at IPFW every year. You'll learn all about the omnibus, visiting writers, and Plogster series. Join me, Jeanette Liu, as we learn the history of each event and how the guest artists are chosen. Watch IPFW Up Close Sundays at noon on College Cable Access Channel 56. Back at the Memorial Coliseum, Mike Moss, Charlie Washington with you. 328 left in the first half. Toledo 31, IPFW 21. And you look at some numbers, Charlie, and numbers don't lie. Toledo 12 of 25 from the floor for 48%. IPFW 9 of 29 for 
the Dons. They like to shoot the three, but they're only one of 13. What do they do differently to try to get into at least a single digit deficit before halftime? Well, by no means are they out of the game. Toledo has not played, you know, tremendous. 48% from the field is respectable. Uh, the Dons have, have had some opportunities. We have to hit our free throws and get the ball inside to Simon. The, the one great thing, Simon's been in the game. He hasn't had to come out because of foul trouble. Uh, to, I don't think he has any fouls. Uh, a couple blocks and a couple good looks, but he has to get the ball inside and get it out, and we have to start nailing some of those three-pointers, maybe get um, Kessnich into the game. IPFW with possession. Three-pointer, no good. Half up, up and in by Kesnick. Seven points for the senior from Pewaukee. Maybe that'll get him going. Something like that, some, an easy basket, gives you some confidence, gets that adrenaline going. Lead down to eight. Ingram being hounded by Bauer. In the block. Thomas dishes off underneath. Pinson, no good. Ball knocked out of bounds. It goes to IPFW. That would have been a great athletic move, but any coach wants their big guy to go up strong and get that foul instead of avoiding the foul and then missing the circus shot. Bo Bauer with the ball, now to Kesnick for the Dons. Jennings looks inside, can't find anybody, kicks it out. They reverse it. Kesnick called for traveling. Turnover number seven for IPFW. Toledo has six. Not what you want when you're trying to make a run. And most of those seven turnovers have been of the unforced variety. Pinson way up top. Shot watched by Terry Collins. Ingram inside the trees. Gets it back out. Jagus watched by Jennings. Shake, big ball, knocked loose. Recovered by Toledo. Ball, now he got a foul. On Thomas. Great job that time by Bauer to step in there. Thomas got way out of control. I was going to say a little out of control, but from start to finish, he was out of control. Great job that time. Great courage that time by Bauer to step in and take the big charge. I call that a player control foul. It's a ninth team foul on Toledo. Keith Triplett re enters the rocket lineup. You might want to explain that to the fans, even though it's uh, the ninth foul, the player control variety, do not get the free throws. Correct, and the offensive man has possession as opposed to a loose ball foul situation. Kesnick skip past the power on the wing, looking for Simon in the block, can't find it, they reverse it. Kesnick watched by Pinson. Now Simon's got it, right away, he's double team, spin move, left hand shot up and in. Nice move that time. Want to see him make that move a little quicker, but that's a good move. Simon in double figures with 10 points. The lead down to six. Hits it off the glass. No good. Bauer to Kesnick with the rebound. Dodds with a chance to cut it to four, perhaps three. 136 to go. Simon. And we've got a foul underneath on David Simon, his first. Said he used the elbow to obtain position. Well, he had pretty good position to start with. He had that defensive player on his back, but I guess he wanted better position and uh, backed him in and got caught that time. Good thing is, uh, not really a good thing, but only the first foul on Simon. And that also was classified as a player control foul, no free throw, even though it's a 10th team foul on IPFW. Triplet, watched by Wyan, cut off, gets it back up top. Looking around the horn, back to Triplett, top of the key. Shake and bake. Forces a shot up and draws the foul. He got Rick Wine up off his feet. So Rick Wyan picks up his second foul. This with a minute and 15 left in the half. Keith Triplett at the line, shooting two. Triplet 0 for 2 so far tonight at the stripe, 7 points. Got up to a tremendous start, certainly has cooled since then. First free throw, good. Kyle Thrasher checks back into the Mastodon lineup, replacing Rick Wyatt. Wyatt checks out with the two fouls. And surprisingly, no points. 
Second free throw by Triplett is good. He's now two of four at the strike. You make a good point. Wyan is someone that's going to have to put some points on the board for the Dons to pull out a victory here tonight. And 16 points and eight boards against Marathon Monday night. Dons working on the perimeter. Bauer, baseline drive, shot up, off, no good. Refunded by Ricardo Thomas. Under a minute, Rockets on the run. That's not the kind of possession you want when you're fighting to stay uh, certainly under 10 points in a basketball game. But uh, he's a freshman and certainly he'll get better. Triplet, spin move, reverse shot, up and in. Triplet now with 11 points. Scored the last four rocket points to lead back up to 10 with 32 seconds to go and a half. Hawkins on the perimeter. Bauer to Simon. Simon double teamed. Somebody should be open. Bauer for three, short. Rebound, Thomas, two on one break. 15 seconds back and forth, tripled off the glass and in. 10 seconds, you don't want to see that quick bucket. Bounce quickly up the floor, three seconds, two seconds. Kesnick for three, no good. As the horn sounds to end the first half of play, the teams head into the locker room. Rockets lead the Mastodons 37-25. Indiana Purdue Fort Wayne presents Spotlight on IPFW, an up-close look at some of the hidden treasures on our campus. Our spotlight today is shining brightly on the IPFW Archaeological Survey, directed by Professor Bob McCullough. Seven hundred to eight hundred years ago, this is what an indigenous farming community river in Hamilton County, Indiana, may have looked like. In the summer of 2001, that same general area looked like this. However, a closer look would have shown you these sites, the remnants of an old military plane or two, rusted cars, and the twisted metal of old farm machinery amongst the vegetation. IPFW's archaeological survey has been excavating that area, known as the Straw Town Enclosure, trying to solve the puzzle of just who lived there. You have intersection of trails. This is Indiana's the crossroads of America, can be pushed back way into prehistory. You have the trail from the Ohio River up to Fort Wayne runs through the area. You have the trail from the Cincinnati area from the Ohio River up to the Kankakee Marsh and up to Wisconsin crisscrosses in the area. And you also have one that, one, run, one that runs east-west. You have evidence that groups from um, as far away as uh, it looks like western Wisconsin and Iowa inhabited the Straw Town site. Uh, there's certainly a question of group that uh, around Cincinnati, Dayton area, you know, middle Ohio River Valley, um, you know, associated with, with uh, those people uh, inhabited the Straw Town enclosure. With the help of grants from the U.S. Department of the Interior National Park Service Historic Preservation Fund, administered by the Indiana Department of Natural Resources, Division of Historic Preservation and Archaeology, the survey team, the Hamilton County Parks Department, and other groups and volunteers have been excavating the remains of a village dating back to the late 13th or early 14th centuries. What we find basically it's a circular shape. The circular village goes about a little less than a football field in diameter, okay? It had a central plaza that was kept fairly clean, you know, of artifacts to be a community area that they uh, maintain. There appears to be a habitation area encircling that plaza, and that's where we believe the houses would be located. McCullough and the others haven't yet determined the design of the houses, but they have discovered some post holes and believe the structures were rectangular with gabled roofs. The remnants of storage and trash pits have been unearthed, as has evidence pointing to a wooden post stockade that encircled the village. McCullough says outside the stockade there was a dry moat or a wide ditch about six or seven feet deep. Archaeologists always find the hard parts. <laughs> so we don't have, you know, is, uh, you know, we probably have an elaborate wood technology and feathers and weaving. Uh, we don't have evidence of that. What we get is their ceramics, their pottery, um, which actually gives us a lot of information because they would draw designs and they trace these designs to various archaeological groups. Um, stone tools, arrowheads, 
certain site with, sites with good bone preservation, we have their bone tools, evidences of uh, types of animals they would consume and you know, use for uh, uh, materials. And we get evidence of, uh, of diet through um, uh, botanical remains. You know, that's how we know they're maize farmers. We have charred corn. You know, later on we have beans, you know, pieces of you know, squash. We know what kind of wild and medicinal plants they were collecting when it becomes charred. We have evidence for that. One of the questions the survey is trying to answer is where did the people who lived at Straw Town go? Were they forced out? or did they move on and others take their place? And it persists in Indiana for close to 200 years. But what happens is the northern areas become, become to be they're abandoned and there's a population shift to the southern portion of the range, you know, down south of Indianapolis. And by, after 1425, we don't have a record of them occupying this area. It's sort of a mystery we haven't ended the answer yet. McCullough and the rest of the survey want to find the answer to that and other mysteries. They believe the answers lie in their excavations at Straw Town. But as with anything else these days, it all depends on money. Our funding basically goes year to year, and, and uh, we're, we're, we've been there for two years based on you know, uh, grants uh, given to us by the Department of Natural Resources, and we have written some grants to, to return. We hope for it to be a long-term project. There's, good, there's plans uh, to develop a museum interpretive center to uh, do a reconstructed uh, uh, Native American village for a you know, living history project. So we hope for it to be a research and educational training park. And right now we're going year by year, so, uh, that's, so that's the long-range goals. And so IPFW's archaeological survey waits for word on new grants hoping they can keep digging into Indiana's past. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stop Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Where can you see world-famous writers, performers, musicians, and other artists up close and personal? Right here at IPFW. On the next edition of IPFW Up Close, we'll tell you about three very special series that take place at IPFW every year. You'll learn all about the omnibus, visiting writers, and Plogster series. Join me, Jeanette Liu, as we learn the history of each event and how the guest artists are chosen. Watch IPFW Up Close Sundays at noon on College Cable Access Channel 56. Um, hi. I was wondering if maybe, if you wanted to go out maybe or something, if you had time. 
I can tell by your excitable behavior and verbal faux pas that you have generalized anxiety with paranoid tendencies. It would never work. Oh, okay, thanks. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Festivities still continuing. It's homecoming here at IPFW. And Charlie Washington, you would think that Toledo is the recipient of the homecoming because at the break, the Rockets lead the Mastodons 37 to 25. And actually, 37, you know, to 25, the Dons, I would consider the Dons not to be out of the basketball game, had the ball down to six, with an opportunity to cut it to four. Um, made a couple turnovers and then the uh, lead balloon to 12 uh, to end the first half. The Dons are one for 16 for three point shooting. Only three players have scored, and so the 25 points have come from three players. Two players in particular have to get going for the Dons to get back into the basketball game. Terry Here's Collins, excuse me, Terry Collins and Rick Wine. Here's a look at the uh, game update. Toledo, 14 of 29 from the floor, that's 48%. IPFW, only 11 of 35 for 31%. Three-point field goals, as you said. IPFW, only one of 16. The Rockets, three of seven. That's about 42%, if my math is right. Uh, assist, Toledo, eight, IPFW, four. Rebound, surprisingly, even at 20 apiece. Toledo has gotten to the line more often than IPFW. They're six of eight, IPFW, two of three. Turnovers, IPFW seven, Toledo six, and unfortunately that's not a category you want to be ahead in. Right, well, one thing you want to look at also with turnovers, the points off turnovers, and I think certainly uh, Toledo's up on the points off turnovers. We haven't turned too many of their uh, turnovers into scoring opportunities, and that one for 16 from three point uh, frequency is just gonna kill you every time. Yeah, just to confirm your point, Charlie, Toledo, eight points off the IPFW turnovers. Mastodons, only two points off of the Rocket turnovers. Uh, some other quick notes. We mentioned the turnover, seven to six. Each team has blocked one shot. Toledo has had three steals, IPFW two. Points in the paint favoring the Mastodons, 12 to eight. So that's a good sign. But now, now let's put you in uh, the hot seat. You are now Doug Knoll, you're in the locker room. Nice crowd here at the Coliseum. You were down six with a minute to go, and then you gave up six quick points to end the half. What are you saying to your team right now? I'm saying I don't like the fact that we're down 12 points, but Don's, we're not out of this basketball game. What do we have to do? Kick the ball inside. We've done a good job once we got the ball inside, but we have to get it out quick. If we don't take that quick opportunity inside, kick it back out. And if we kick it back out, our three point shooters have to be ready to shoot and certainly have to start nailing better than a 1 for 16 ratio. Let's take a look at some other numbers as the Rockets you see warming up for the second half. IPFW yet to make their appearance. For Toledo, they are led in scoring by the senior Keith Triplett. Keith, 13 points of five, on 5 of 9 shooting, 1 of 2 from 3 point range, 2 of 4 at the stripe. He's the only player in double figures for Toledo. Sammy, and I always I knew I'd mess it up, V. Jagas. <laughs> For some reason, we're having trouble with that tonight. Six points on 204 shooting, one of one at the line, one of two from three point range. Five points apiece from the, the redshirt freshman Alan Pinson and the senior A.J. Schellerberger. Four points from the freshman Florentino Valencia. Two points apiece from freshman point guard Justin Ingram and from Chauncey Shelton playing but not scoring, Kareem Milson, Rache Russell, Antoine Curry, and Ricardo Thomas. For IPFW, they're led by the big guy, Dave Simon, in the middle. 
Simon with 10 points on four of four shooting, but he's at two or three from the foul line. Eight points from Quinton Crothers, the sophomore out of Flint, Michigan, four or six from the field. And seven points from Jim Kesnick, the 6'10 senior out of Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Three or six from the field, including one of three from three point range. Uh, that, but that, as you said, that's it. They're the only three Mastodons that have scored. And when you look at someone like a Rick Ryan, who, as I said, on Monday night in the exhibition finale, had 16 points and eight rebounds. Terry Collins, who had 25 points against the Harlem Globetrotters, came back with 17 more Monday night against Marathon, and he's zilch on the scoreboard. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, the others, you might not you know, expect them to score as much. Bo Bauer, the freshman point guard. Byron Malone, the other freshman from North Central. Justin Hawkins, the freshman from Garrett. Uh, the bigger guys, Brandon Jennings and Kyle Thrasher, the sophomores there. Uh, you don't expect too much from them. There you see another senior, Keon Henderson, exhorting his teammates on. Keon trying to come back from a knee surgery. Unfortunately, they found out literally hours before they played the Globetrotters that he had a stress fracture of a toe. Didn't play against the Trotters, didn't play against Marathon Oil, is not playing tonight. They hope he'll be back Tuesday night in uh, their next ball game when they take on Kent State, also from the MAC. Keon is an in integral part of this IPFW team. Well, first of all, Keon's an incredible person. A wonderful kid, um, tremendous athleticism, has had the worst luck um, injury-wise you can possibly think of as far as uh, his, uh, I think, four years here as it's gone, not played very much due to injuries. Uh, but they're certainly uh, needing his athleticism on the court, which is what people like uh, Carruthers gives him, Collins gives him. Those are people that have to be on the court and have to create. Players coming back on the court. Toledo has the first possession. They've got their original starting five. It's uh, Trippett going to inbound the ball. Ingram, the point guard. Kareem Milson. And... Uh, Vajegas. Milson loses the ball. Simon picks it up for the Dons. Now that's a good sign. Yes, now we need to score. Score off that turnover. Bauer watched by Ingram. Kesnick way up top at 6'10", watched by the 6'9", Pinson. Toledo back with their man-to-man -man defense. Kesnick, spin move. Kicks it out to Carruthers. Simon way up top. 17 footer off the mark. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Toledo. Remain Mastodon possession. I'm not sure about that call or if um, Simon did that on his own, but I don't particularly like to see him out there with as effective as he's been down low. Bauer looking for somebody in white. Ball knocked away by Vijegas. Good effort by Sammy. And there was a freshman mistake. He couldn't find somebody open, thought he would get it out deep. And Vijegas played quarterback and uh, saw the pass coming all the way and nearly got the steal. That's a move maybe you want to call a timeout and reset that, uh, that offense. Kesnicko inbound it. For the first time tonight, token three-quarter pressure put on by Ingram. Bauer gets it up over midcourt. For others, a very nice first half offensively for IPFW. Toledo almost in a matchup zone. Whistle foul, I believe, on Ingram, pushing off Rick Ryan. For Justin Ingram, that's his second foul. The team first here in the second half. Again, shot clock being reset to the 35. Bauer to inbound it. A little harder pass this time. Brothers gets it. Back to Bo Bauer. Dons working on the perimeter, trying to find, be it Simon, Kesnick open underneath. Kesnick, Wyan, three-pointer, yes! Rick Wyan's first points of the night. 
Good, and that's a great, great way to get him going, but don't give it right back. And the Jagas comes right back with a tray for Toledo. Tit for tat. It's 40 to 28. We played almost a minute and a half here in the second half. You're down 12, you can't trade baskets. Ball knocked away from Simon by Vajegas. Here come the Rockets. Ingram driving the lane. Left hand shot up, in and out, no. Rebound knocked out of bounds. They say off of IPFW, it'll be Toledo basketball. Toledo's just all night has just been one step quicker to the basketball on both ends of the court. Rockets ready to inbound it. Keith Triplett pulling the trigger. To Ingram, who's watched by Bo Bauer. Ingram, very close to mid-court line. Perhaps a five-second call, but IPFW is calling for him. Skip pass, Triplett for three, no. Rebound, Ryan for IPFW. Good block out by Rick Ryan. Here come the Dons. Brothers up top, watched by Triplett. Lob pass for Simon in the post. Shot off the glass and in. David Simon now with a dozen. That's going to be there all night, but we have to get something going from outside to make that a little easier for Simon. They're able to key on that because that's the only thing the Dons have going right now. Lead down to 10. Ingram dances inside, shot no good, tap no good. Simon with the rebound for the Dons. Rockets had two cracks at it and missed. Brothers lost the ball. And Don's got a break to say it was kicked. Q, as he's called by his teammates, tried to make something happen inside. I thought he was about ready for takeoff that time. I think he was fearful of another offensive foul. Bauer up top, around the horn. Brothers to Wyan. Wyan watched by Triplett. Driving on triplet, shot up, no, but we got a whistle and a foul. And Rick Wyant, who shot 86% from the line last year, no, he will not go to the line. They're going to say, or is he? Yes, he is going to go on the line shooting two. The combination, Mike, of quickness and length on these athletic players of the Rockets is obviously giving Wyant and Terry Collins uh, some problems. Foul was on Pence in his second, team second in the second half. As we said, Rick Wine shot 86% from the free throw line last year. Now well, perhaps the jinx him. missed the first one. Rick with three points on the night, a tray coming earlier in this half. Six seven, junior out of Franklin Central. Makes the second. He now has four points. The lead down to nine, 40 to 31, with 16.48 to go. Triplet. Nelson, back to Triplet inside. Left hand layup is good. That's a big time move that time by Triplet. His first points of the second half. Ingram called for the foul, and that's his third, second here in the, in the second half. Rache Russell comes back into the rocket lineup, replacing Justin Ingram. Wyant to inbound it for the Mastodons. 16-27 to go. Dons down by 11. Need to make a little bit of a run. Oh, fake the three. Brother spin move. Nice feed underneath Simon for the jam. And he draws the foul to boot. That's the kind of athleticism that Quinn Carruthers just exhibited. He's one of the few people on this team that can rate their own shot against very athletic defensive players. Great move to get open. The help came and nice dish, great catch, and great flush also by Simon. Milson picks up his second foul. Team fourth, Schellerberger back in the lineup. For Toledo, Simon trying to get a three-point play. And he does. He's looked pretty comfortable on the free throw line. He has three of four from the strike tonight. The lead down to eight, 42-34. Time for defense if you're a Don fan. 
Shallow bar garage. Simon cut off by Simon. He kicks it out. The Jagas with a tray. Third tray of the night for Sammy Vajegas. Every time the Dons uh, get a little run going, I tell you what, the Rockets, uh, you have to commend them. They've come back and uh, thwarted that run. Brothers looking for a cutter. Simon back up. Wyant for three. No. Rebounded triplet. Rockets on the run. Triplet. Spin move. Cut off. Schellenbarger inside the paint. No. Wyant with the rebound. Wyant on his last shot. Feet were not set and was not in the rhythm. He was open, though. Simon fakes this long shot. Dishes off. Kissed it. Shot in, but they're not going to count it. They're going to call triplet for the foul. That's a good playmaking move that time by David Simon, the big fella. His first team fifth. We got a timeout on the floor. 15 19 left here in the second half. Score, Toledo 45, IPFW 34. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back, everybody, to the Memorial Coliseum. Mike Moss, Charlie Washington with you. 45-34 our score. The visitors from Toledo on top. As you see, Coach Dan Joplin meeting with his squad. Charlie, the Dons are shooting a little bit better here in the second half. They're now 35% from the floor as opposed to 31% at halftime. I think they're doing some things that they have to do. Quinn Carruthers is in a pretty good rhythm, making some things happen. And David Simon has stayed in the game, stayed out of foul trouble, and done some very good things inside. Correction score is 45 to 34. 45 34, Rockets by 11. That last three point shot did go in, didn't it? Unfortunately. <laughs> Wyant inbound for the Dons to Bo Bauer. Brothers has been scoreless here in the second half. A whistle and a foul underneath. Triplett picks up his second in a matter of seconds. Sixth team foul, one more, and the Dons will be in the bonus. We got 15 minutes and 12 seconds to go. And if Sorry. Excuse me, Mike. I was going to say the thing about Wyan in this half, although he's still struggling, but he is being aggressive and he's a threat on the court, and that defense has to give him that respect. Strong move to the hole by Wyan. He makes it, and he draws the third foul on Triplett. Smart play by Rick Wyan. Doug said attack the man with the two fouls, and now he's got three. Maybe that'll get him going, and it's a great lead-in for what we were just talking about, about Rick Ryan getting going, being more aggressive, and being a threat on the basketball court, because the Dons has to have to have someone else to help David Simon, particularly on the inside. Three fouls on trip, but he goes to the bench, replaced by Russell. Wyant knocks down the free throw. Rick now with seven points here in the second half. Don't look now, it's an eight point ball game with 15 minutes to go, 45-37. Shelton also in the lineup for Toledo. Jagas misses the jumper, tap up and in by Schellenbarger. That time Schellenbarger just overpowered Simon on the glass that time. Why it's this crowd down here at the Coliseum. Wyatt for three. In and out, no. Rebounded by Russell. Russell wanting to go coast to coast. Cut off by Bo Bauer. Left-hand dribbler takes it strong. 
Shot does not go in, but they're gonna call a foul on the shot. I believe the foul is on Wyan. Foul down low. It's a pretty good block if it was be by Simon up top. Give the foul to Bo Bauer. His second. It's only the first team foul. First free throw. Good by Russell. That's his first point of the night. I think number 32, Antoine Curry, enters the game for the first time. Second free throw, good as well. The lead back up to a dozen. 49-37. Brothers, Simon, Bauer for three. Yes! Bo Bauer, first collegiate basket. Greatly needed basket that time for him as well as the dive. Russell, double team, looks for help. Inside, Schellenbarger caught the bucket. Simon tried to go away, and they called the foul on David instead. David Simon, that's his second. Team second. Tough, tough ball there. David, you can see David was trying to get out of the way. Yes, he saw he didn't have the position, wasn't going to be able to block the shot, trying to get out of the way. Uh, but good. Shell Barker getting point number 10. This is nice senior. Lead quickly back up to 12. Collins and Hawkins in the lineup for the Dons. Needs some instant offense. Lob pass to Simon, who's fouled underneath by Shella Barger. Third foul on A.J. Shella Barger. Also the eighth team foul, so that should send David Simon to the line. Shooting one in the bonus. You mentioned a moment ago the Dons need instant offense. Right now they're not set up against a team this quick and athletic to have people create those shots for themselves to get that instant offense. So inside and out is going to have to be the way to go. Simon makes the first, gets the bonus. Substitution for Toledo. Valencia in the lineup for the first time in the second half. David Simon going for point number 17. And he gets it. Simon, five of six at the line so far tonight. Very nice performance by Dave Simon. He just needs some help. 52-42. Lead back down to 10. Near the 13-20 mark. Russell watched by Bauer. Got to continue the man-to-man -man defense. Traveling called on Vajegas. Turnover number eight for the Rockets. Dons with a chance to get into single-digit deficit. Jagas a little bit too quick for his own good that time. Dons need to play it smart this time down. They need the bucket. Up by 10, near the 13-minute mark. Bauer cut off to the baseline, kicks it back out. Harry Collins, scoreless tonight. on the perimeter, and Collins loses it. Well, Toledo thought it went off Terry's leg, but to say it went off Russell's instead. Nine seconds on the shot clock. 48 on the game clock. Hawkins will inbound it. To Bauer. Bauer. Collins. Three pointer. No. Terry had a good look, had the screen, just didn't get the shot. Here comes Toledo. Jacobs trying to find Valencia. Shot up, no. Tapped out of bounds by Toledo. Curry knocked it out. It'll be IPFW basketball. Good job that time by six foot Terry Collins coming down in to help rebound. The only way Curry could get the ball is to go over his back or reach over and tap it out of bounds. Bauer underneath. 
kicks it out and around. Again, the Don's not able to get it inside right away. Simon. Simon says, spin it out, kick it out. Kesnick loses it. Shelton has it. That time you'd rather see, I know his confidence may be waning a little bit, but I'd rather see Terry Collins take that shot as opposed to force the ball inside. Inside feed, shot up, missed. Rebounded, missed, tap, no good. Kestick finally with the rebound. Rockets had three cracks at it and missed. Let's see what IPFW can do. Simon, out to Collins, drives inside the lane, forces a shot up. Draws the foul, doesn't make the shot, he draws the foul. He will shoot two. Foul was on Curry, that's his first. One thing, Mike, that FW shooters have to have their feet set, hands and arms ready to catch and shoot the basketball. The Rockets are not giving them any time to set up and shoot. And the Dons right now are not quick enough on the floor to create their own shot. So be ready when the penetration happens, be ready to shoot. Kessler just got caught a couple of times. Not ready to shoot and a defense is closed out. Byron Malone in the lineup for IPFW as well as Kyle Thrasher. Terry Collins at the line. Shooting one of the bonus. Terry the junior from Fort Wayne Snyder. Makes the first. First point of the night. Comes with 11.32 to go. Another substitution for the Rockets. Deontay Howe, a 6'4 freshman in the lineup for the first time, replacing Bajegas. Second free throw coming for Terry Collins. No, the Dons are not playing a great basketball game. They are hanging around. Free throw missed, rebounded by Chauncey Shelt. Russell picked up by Malone. That's also playing a little bit of 3-2 zone. Man to man principles. Russell watched by Malone, pair of freshmen. Whistle, foul underneath. Holding foul called on IPFW. Thrasher picks up his first. Team third. We've got a timeout on the floor. 11 10 left in the contest. Score. Toledo 52, IPFW 43. everybody to the Memorial Coliseum. Mike Moss, Charlie Washington with you. Charlie, we're at the under 12 timeout, 11-10 to go. The Dons down by nine. I think they've gotten it down to eight. Can't seem to break that little jinx, but at least right now it still is a single digit deficit, not a double digit. They're hanging around. Before that timeout, I was looking on the floor and I was wondering where the scoring gonna come from. Terry Collins, as I looked out, was the only scorer on the floor, and he's having a hard go of it tonight with the very athletic Rocket defenders are hanging all over him right there with his every move. But Don's are right there to have to find a scoring, give Simon a little rest, get him back into the game. But they're going to have to run some offense with these people on the floor right now, and Kessler's going to have to give us some offense. Thrasher, Kesnick, Hawkins, Collins, and Malone on the floor for IPFW. It'll be Toledo basketball, Shelton to inbound it. Looking for somebody, it's way back out to Russell. Russell watched by Malone. Oh, pushed off Thrasher, no call. Shelton knocks Thrasher down, they kick out three point shot, no, rebounded Malone, the Dons get the ball. I thought there might have been a foul or two to be called on Toledo that trip down, but the strike people said no. Also seems the Rockets are buying some time for their uh, top players also. Trip put on the bench with three fouls. Thrasher on the wing. Back up to Collins, 13 on the shot clock. Collins for three, no good. 
Shelton with the rebound. Three blue shirts, only one white shirt under the basket that time down. Thomas, watched by Kesnick. Lob pass, ball taken away by Terry Collins. Good help defense. But he loses it to Russell. And then he commits a blocking foul to boot. Two errors that time by Terry Collins as he draws his third personal foul, team fourth. It's just not happening tonight for Terry Collins, but he is giving a big effort tonight. Playing defense, getting in there, rebounding, doing what he can do to help this basketball team. Kujagas and Ingbeck are going to line up for Toledo, Wine and Simon in the lineup for IPFW. Rockets are inbounded near midcourt. Chauncey Shelton, sophomore to do the honors. Ingram, Southpaw freshman being guarded by an IPFW Southpaw freshman in Byron Malone. Nearly a steal by Thrasher on the double team. Ingram for three. Dagger in the heart. Five points now for Justin Ingram. It's 55-43, the lead back up to 12 for Toledo. Thrasher fakes the three, gets it into Simon, who's double teamed. Gets it back out. You're right, Charlie, the Docs just look a step slower than Toledo tonight. Wyan for three, short. Rebound Ingram, Rockets want to run. Ingram kicks it out, but Jake is just inside the arc, knocks it down for a long two. And they are spotting up, catching and shooting the basketball. Something the Dons have kind of waited to do, held on to the ball, not ready to shoot. And like we just stated, a step slower. IPFW calls timeout, gives us a chance to tell you to learn more about IPFW sports by tuning into Mastodon Spotlight each Wednesday and Thursday evening here on College 56. Here's truly Mike Miles. We've used the recent sports activities. We look at game footage, visit with coaches and student athletes. That's Mastodon Spotlight. Wednesday nights at 11 o'clock, Thursday nights at 7 o'clock, and Saturdays at 12.30 right here on College Cable Access Channel 56. Doug Noll calls to timeout with 9.16 to go. What do you tell him? Well, first of all, you say what we already know. Right now, we're getting out hustled, and they're beating us to the spot. But we, once again, are not out of this basketball game, but we have to go right now, get a good possession, get a couple defensive stops, and get back into this basketball game. Looking at some of the numbers. Mastodons 16 of 46 from the floor for 35 percent. Toledo 21 of 45 for 47 percent. The Achilles heel tonight, three of 23 from three-point range. That's only 13 percent for the Dons. Toledo a very respectable six of 11 for 55 percent. Both teams have shot 11 free throws. Toledo making nine. IPFW eight. Rockets leading and rebounding 28-26. And. Uh, Again, 9.16 to go, you're down 14 points. There are no 14 point plays, but the Dons have to start stringing together points here and there in, in bits of bunches. And six for 11, that's a little better than respectable. I tell you, I'll take six for 11 from out there any time, but they're also beating the Dons inside with quickness, not just inside points, but quickness. And with the pass, that's how you get the passes out for that six for 11. Malone at the point, Carruthers. Thrasher on the wing, looking for Wyatt to cut. Doesn't get him, now he gets to Rick. Rick may want to drive baseline. Fakes the three, baseline drive, stops, pops, in and out, no. Rebound fought for, controlled by Valencia for Toledo. Nice move by Shelton, he waited, got Simon up off his feet, and knocked down the easy bank shot. It's 59-43. Next two or three possessions are very important. You don't want to get blown out of here. Thrasher for three, yes. Kyle Thrasher with his first points of the night. Greatly needed basket. Greatly needed basket further down. Now we need a defensive stop to go down and score another scoring opportunity. Ingram washed by Malone near midcourt. Shelt picked up by Carruthers. Now Thrasher comes over to try to double team. But Jagas wants to drive on Wyatt. Kicks it out. Ingram for three. Yes. 
once again, the breakdown, the, the breakdown off the dribble that creates the open three-point shot. And it's not as hard to stand out there and shoot an open shot than it is to, with a hand flying in your face. Ingram with eight points now, two of them, uh, six of them on three-point field goals. Wyatt, double team, looking for somebody, gets it to Simon underneath. Spin move by David. He can't do anything. Ball knocked out of bounds. Touched by Vajegas. It will be IPFW basketball when we come back from the under eight timeout. 7.33 to go. Rockets 62, Mastodons 46. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. Did you know IPFW has its very own pep band? The Stomp Band is looking for more members and we want you to join. IPFW students even receive a credit for their participation. Perfection is not required, just enthusiasm and a desire to share your school spirit. Check out our website for more information. Don't just play, stomp. Get a good look at the IPFW cheerleaders performing in front of the home crowd here at the Coliseum. 62-46 our score, 7.33 to go. It's, it's crunch time, Charlie. Well, it's do or die. Um, if you don't get back into the game, you have to start looking, you know, continue to play hard. Always encourage your team for things you can build on for the next game. So if it doesn't work out for this game, we're still working at possession for possession. What can we do to build ourselves for the next game? Yeah, the next game for IPFW will be Tuesday night, second half of a men's women's doubleheader. They'll take on Kent State. That'll be after the completion of the women's home opener against the Ball State Cardinals. Women tip off at six, men approximately eight. It's Tuesday night here at the Coliseum. Back to the action, Crothers with the inbound pass from Thrasher. Crothers had eight points in the first half. He's been scoreless here in the second. Bauer for three, no good. Thrasher with an offensive board. We'll try it again. Crothers up top, Kesnick. Perimeter passing, trying to get to Simon on the block. Simon trying to use that big frame of his. Offensive foul, no good is the basket. It went down, but disallow it. Simon picks up his third foul instead. This was 7.04 to go. Again that time, Simon got the ball inside, waited a little bit too long for things to develop. Catch it and go quick or kick it back out quickly. But one thing I do like is that Carruthers is creating some things off the top of the offense right now. But Jagas watched by Thrasher, fouled by Thrasher. For Kyle Thrasher, that is his second foul. Team sixth, one more, and Toledo will be in the bonus. Doug Knowles, we said in his fifth year as head coach of the Mastodons. Trying to exhort his charges on. Ingram, watched by Bauer. Shelton, picked up by Carruthers. Pinson back in the lineup. Baseline jumper, partially blocked. Picked up by Valencia, however, loose ball. Fought for, picked up by Ingram. Three blue shirts, one white shirt. Going after that loose ball. Vajegas, shot up, partially blocked, picked off by Simon. To Bauer, here come the Dons on the attack. Simon from Kesnick, step move, they're gonna say traveling. Basket disallowed. Triplet comes back in the lineup. Triplet, I'm sorry, set out nine minutes. Comes back, 6.05 to go. A teaching point there. Typically, you don't want to give a pass to your big man that far out on the court because things like that are going to happen. Give the ball to him where he can take a step and smash. Pass inside. Whistle. Foul underneath. Valencia had post position. They're going to call it Dave Simon for the foul. His fourth, team seventh. 
Simon's had a pretty tough couple of uh, two or three minutes. A uh, couple, I think, three fouls and a couple turnovers. And especially they hurt because he scored baskets on both the turnovers. Exactly. At the line, Florentino Valencia, 6'6 freshman. Gets the friendly bounce. That's his fifth point of the night. He's three for three from the stripe. 63-46. 550 to go. That's are at the point where they have to play each possession one at a time to the best of their abilities. And they've put five people on the court that can hit um, outside shots. Second free throw good. Valencia 4-4 four four tonight at the foul line. He now has six points. A lead up to 18. Brothers picked up by Triplett. Shake and bake kicks it back out to Collins. Bauer throws it away. Pass intended for Kesnick picked off by Triplett instead. Rockets on the run. Now they hold it up. Triplett hands it off to Ingram and they'll run the offense over again. Ingram. Bounce pass, Pinson on the high post. Valencia nearly lost it. Instead, drives baseline, knocks Collins down, shot up and in. Let's see what they do. They're going to count the bucket? Yes, they do. They're going to call foul on Thrasher. His third, team eight. Credit Valencia with the bucket. And he'll go to the line to shoot two, shoot one rather. Valencia makes the free throw. That's five straight points for the freshman. They have chipped away and chipped away and they've uh, ballooned the lead to 21. Under five minutes to go. And we've got Stoppage of play. Oh, little ball came onto the court. Official stop play so no one gets injured. 4.54 left. Dons need a bundle. Clevenger, who's in the lineup, first time in the second half, now at the point. Clevenger to Collins. Collins fakes a three. Kesnick, high post. Back to Collins, two-man game. Terry, spin move, shot up and in. First field goal of the night for Terry Collins. Comes four and a half minutes to go. Now 67-48. Triplet wants to drive on the freshman Hawkins. Bank shot, good. Count the bucket. They're going to call a foul, I believe, on Triplett after he released the ball. Similar to a car earlier what happened in the, the game. Yeah. <laughs> 17 points now for Triplett, but he picks up his fourth foul. This coming with 4.11 to go. Tenth team foul. Kyle Thrasher will be at the line shooting two. First free throw attempts of the night for Kyle Thrasher. 6 8 sophomore. First one is good. One positive, Charlie, the Mastodons. 9 of 12 at the foul line tonight. 75%. Doug's always wanted it 75 to 80%. Start looking for positives now. And Simon, exactly. And Simon, particularly impressive uh, at the free throw line. Second free throw, no good. Rebounded by the Rockets. Ingram crosses midcourt. Double team looking for help. And Toledo calls a timeout. 30 second timeout with 4.01 to go. Let's take a break as well. Don's trailing 69 49. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 56 Sports. I'm high. 
I was wondering if maybe, if you wanted to go out maybe or something, if you had time. I can tell by your excitable behavior and verbal faux pas that you have generalized anxiety with paranoid tendencies. It would never work. Oh, okay, thanks. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Dance trailing by 20. Rockets to inbound the basketball. Shelton gets it to Ingram. Ingram will bring it up over midcourt. Picked up by Clevenger. Shelton watched by Collins. Triplet playing with four fouls. Inside pass. Valencia. Big strong guy misses. Gets us a rebound. Misses again. Rebounded by Kesnick. Valencia had two cracks at it and missed it. Collins way off the mark on a three. Air ball picked up by Triplett. Terry Collins 0 for 8 from three point range tonight. Nice dish, shot up, offensive foul gonna be called, I believe on Valencia. Good defense that time. We've got our under four minute timeout coming with 3.18 to go. We'll take a break as well. This is IPFW Basketball, and you're watching it at College 56 Sports. Welcome back to the Coliseum, everybody. Mike Moss, Charlie Washington with you. Three minutes, 18 seconds, all that remains in the season opener for both teams. Rockets gradually expanding their lead. They led by 12 at the intermission, 37 to 25. And now they lead by 21 points, 69 to 48. Charlie, now you play the last 318 for pride and educational purposes. No question about it. We're still looking you know, for every possession to see what positive can come out of every time down the court on offense as well as defense and we're building for the next game and future games. They called that last Toledo foul on Pinson. That is his third. Mastodon, so inbound the basketball. I'm talking about positives, I think we've done be remiss if we didn't commend this athletic program, athletic department, as well as the student activities board. Wonderful job entertaining you know, the fans here tonight. Bauer, the freshman, watched by Ingram, the freshman. Brothers picked up by Triplett. Bauer inside the lane, and he is hacked. He will go to the line, shoot a pair. Gonna call a foul on Shelton. Chauncey Shelton, that's his first foul of the night. Comes with 3.06 left. Said it's the 11th team foul, so they're over 10. Power will shoot two. Bo Bauer, 6'3 freshman from Lewis Cass High School. All stater. Makes the first one. He now has four points tonight. Makes it 69 to 50. This young man's going to be a very good basketball player. Uh, going to struggle some as a freshman, as any other freshman, you know, might at, at any time. But a lot of poise on the court. Going to be a very good player. Second one, no good. Rebounded by the Rockets. Ingram. Rockets spreading it out almost into a four corner offense now. With 246 to go. Bauer nearly had the steal. Ingram recovers. 11 on the shot clock. Ingram watched by Bauer. Baseline drive. Shot up. No. Rebound Rick Wine for the Dons. Gets it out to Bauer. Nearly stolen by Ingram. 
Bauer to Simon. Simon inside, kicks it out. Kesnick off the glass and in. Kesnick now with nine points tonight. Nice feed from Simon. 69-52 to 13 to go. Simon's had a couple of pretty good assists tonight. Triplet on the wing, now brings it back out. Gets it to Shelton. Ingram, walked by Bauer. Looks for help, gets it to Triplet near midcourt. Five on the shot clock. Triplet stops, pops, misses. Rebounded, Carruthers has it almost nearly taken away, does have it taken away. Sophomore mistake, fight for the loose ball. They're gonna call a jump ball. It'll go to IPFW on the alternate possession with 1.41 to go. Once the Jagus, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say the Don's got a little bit out scrambled for the basketball that time. The Jagus and Thomason for Toledo, replacing Pinson and Ingram. Momentary delay, get some debris and some perspiration wiped off the floor. Wyatt, Kesnick, Simon, Malone, and Carruthers on the floor for the Mastodons. Shelton, Thomas, Vajegas, Triplet, and now Howell is going to replace Shelton. Deontay Howell. Shelton checks out with four points. Wyatt inbounds the basketball. Buck 39 to go. Don's trying to close the gap. Simon in the block. Spin move, left hand shot, no good. Rebounded by Thomas. Vajegas brings the ball up. Sammy Vajegas, the sophomore. Thomas, again, Toledo wants to play their version of four corners. Spread the defense out with a buck 12 to go. Howell. Triplet. Back up top to Thomas. Eight in the shot clock. Thomas wants to drive on Kesnick. Stop. Six footer. Short. Gets his own rebound. A fresh 35. Under a minute to go. Rockets going to win the season opener. Prove their all time mark against IPFW to 2 0. Triplet. Stolen by Wyant. Rick Wyant. Now we have a whistle as a collision. Carruthers, Thomas. Are they going to call a double foul? I'm not sure. They're going to call a foul on Thomas. His second. With 38 seconds to go. Quentin Carruthers at the line for two. His first two free throw attempts of the night. First one rolls in and out, and that's the luck of the Dons tonight, Charlie. Substitute. Too, too late. I'm sorry, Will Berger, 6'4 freshman, comes in replacing Triplet. Triplet checks out tonight. 17 points. Second free throw by Carruthers is good. He's got nine. 69-53. Dons full court pressure with 38 seconds to go. Vajegas gets it, goes right by Malone. Shake and bake time, and now Byron Malone called for a reach-in foul. His first, team ninth, with 31 seconds to go. 69-53 our score. Toledo on top. Sammy Vajegas at the line. He is one for one so far tonight. Eric Bergstrom, seven foot freshman from Minnesota, replacing Dave Simon. Simon checks out with a team high 17 points and four rebounds. He was, like you say, five or six at the stripe. That's another positive, Charlie. First free throw by Vajegas is good. He'll get the bonus. One thing I would work on with David is a little variety in his post moves. Every time it seemed he was holding the ball and waiting for everything to develop. Get some variety, go quick sometimes. You can wait sometimes, but go to that basket quick, right off the catch. 
Second free throw good now. Here's a turnover. And Toledo can run out the clock without taking a shot. Shot clock is off. We're down to 20 seconds. But Jagas, pawn nearly stolen. In the block, Valencia kicks it out to Howe. He's going to try a three. No good. Bergstrom is fouled by Valencia. And Eric Bergstrom with 8.8 .8 seconds to go. Got a chance to get his first collegiate point. Foul on Valencia is his third. Eric Bergstrom, seven foot freshman out of, I hope I pronounce it right, Malacca, might be Malacca, Minnesota. Misses the first one. We'll get one more. You say Malacca, I say Malacca. Russell back in for Vajegas. 71 53. Wyant and Thomas both moved in. What are they going to call it? Nope, they're going to call the violation for both of them, and therefore Toledo's going to get the ball to run out the last eight plus seconds. And they're going to hold it. Four, three, two, one. And this game is history. Final score, the Toledo Rockets 71, the IPFW Mastodons 53. Players and coaches congratulating each other near center court. Charlie, I think it all goes back. We want to take a quick look back at this game, the final minute of the first half when the Dons had, as you said, trailing by six, had possession of the ball, down 31-25. A couple of costly turnovers. The Rockets score the last six points of the half, going to the locker room with a 12-point lead rather than a six or eight-point lead. IPFW never recovered. No, they came out pretty strong in the uh, second half, but they came out trading baskets, and you can't do that when you're down 12 points. Uh, pretty good showing by some certain people. Have to get some other people going for this team to be effective. The big thing at this level, quickness and the strength raises up a notch or two, and you have to be prepared to handle it and be able to create your own shots and knock down the three-point shots when you get them. Real quickly, Toledo 25 of 58 from the floor for 43%, 7 of 13 from three-point range for 54%, 14 of 16 at the line for 88%. They were led in scoring by Keith Triplett with 17 points, Sammy Vajegas with 16. They were the only ones, in, oh, I'm sorry, A.J. Schellerberger had 10. They were the only ones in double figures for Toledo. IPFW, 19 of 53 from the floor for 36%. Only four of 26 from three-point range for 15%. 11 of 19 at the foul line for 58%. One man in double figures, Dave Simon with 17 points. Kesnick with nine. Quentin Crothers with nine. Wyant with seven. Terry Collins only with three. Final thoughts and comments, Charlie Washington. Well, you got to get scoring from, more scoring from Wyatt and definitely more scoring from um, Terry Collins. The Dons, it's a, a great evening, homecoming. You have to keep this crowd coming back. So we have to, you know, get more enthusiasm here and a little better showing the next time out. Well, that next time out, as we said, will be on uh, Tuesday night this next week, two days before Thanksgiving when they entertain Kent State. The women are playing tonight, their season opener at the University of Kentucky. Don't have a score for you, but tune in to Mastodon Spotlight next week, and we'll update you on that. A couple of quick upcoming events.